Saudi Arabia is known for several things, including being one of the richest oil-driven nations in the world. However, their reputation is fast growing to encompass their audacious projects. With one of the largest oil reserves in the world, you'd expect that they'd focus all efforts on their black gold. Instead, they're building a terra yacht, a crazy $8 billion floating turtle megacity called Pangeos. The Origin his Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has taken up core duties in ruling the Arab nation, as his father is now aged. The rule has come with several notable changes, including increased efforts to diversify their economy into other aspects. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, when oil prices dropped and demand was low, Saudi Arabia has now come to face with a hard truth. It cannot continue to rely solely on oil. One of its major oil buyers, China, was hugely hit by the pandemic, as travel restrictions were put in place, and both local and international travel almost completely shut down. In response, Vision 2030, which was first announced in 2016, is being revived, and efforts have been amplified. It has been described as a plan to free the kingdom from its dependence on oil experts by ushering in a new era of diversification and opportunity, driven by investment into key strategic sectors. In addition to creating a dynamic society with inclusive opportunities for all, the plan includes strategic investments in new industries, tourism, and a sustainable environment. In a book dedicated to the vision, Prince Salman says, We have outlined a comprehensive and ambitious vision for Saudi Arabia until the year 2030. It is the first step on the journey towards a better, brighter future for our country and citizens. And the vision is indeed ambitious. Five giga projects have been launched, including Neom, a $500 billion city project currently under construction in the northwestern part of the country off the coast of the Red Sea. It aims to be a futuristic metropolis built from scratch and operates completely on renewable energy sources. When completed, the smart city will rely on artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, and the Internet of Things. The city will also be a hub for biotech and digital industries. It has also been dubbed The Line. It is anticipated that it will be close to 30 times larger than New York City, being only 200 meters wide but 170 kilometers long with the capability for 9 million people. It will have no roads, cars, or emissions, and will be powered by renewable energy. The project will also require the construction of an extensive network of bridges and causeways, which will connect the islands and provide transportation infrastructure. The bridges and causeways will need to be designed to withstand the harsh environmental conditions of the Red Sea, as well as potential natural disasters. Although it is still in the beginning phase, it is expected to be an engineering marvel that could could redefine the limits of construction and design. Yet, this is not all. The Red Sea Project is also being developed as a luxury tourism resort, centered around the treasures of the Red Sea, including 90 untouched islands, desert dunes, multiple beaches, and even dormant volcanoes. It is anticipated that by 2030, it will have up to 50 hotels with 8,000 rooms ready to receive people from all over the world. Another audacious project is the Kadia, a mini city built over 300 square meters, centered around the youth and dedicated to sports, entertainment, and arts. It is being built to include theme parks, sports arenas, and racetracks, to mention just a few. Thus, it is clear that Saudi Arabia is indeed a big visionary regarding larger-than-life projects and edifices that are out of this world. And this is why, when news of an $8 billion project called the Floating City of the Future began to make the rounds, it wasn't so much of a surprise that Saudi Arabia was the proposed location. But a floating city? The concept of a floating city completely deviates from the norm and the idea of terrestrial cities, which we have generally become accustomed to. When we build houses, we mostly build on the land and then go to the sea for boat rides, cruises, and vacations, but definitely not as a permanent destination. But certain cities like Venice, Lindau, and Bruges are built around canals and lakes, giving the illusion that they are floating on water. In marine communities, people have also devised means to build houses above the water, using strong rafts and elevated platforms. However, the idea of a whole city suspended in the middle of the sea is entirely different. One would normally term it impossible, but floating cities are not new. This is not the first time such a utopian city has been envisioned, conceived, and even drafted with architectural drawings. Let's take a brief look at the history. Beginning in the late 1950s and into the 1960s, architects began to seek solutions to various 
challenges plaguing urban development. One of their propositions was the creation of floating cities, and a few men not only pioneered this concept, but also made detailed plans for constructing such structures. One such was a man called Kenzo Tange, who came up with a master plan in 1960 to remedy the challenges faced by Tokyo as industrialization hit the urban town. He drafted intricate plans of a floating city in pyramid form that was to be called Tokyo Bay. Kiyonore Kikitake also envisioned a marine city, a floating metropolis in the ocean that would be self-sufficient and free from natural disasters such as earthquakes and flooding. Yet another architect, Paul Maymont, sought to proffer a lasting solution to Monaco's desperate need for space and designed a floating city called Thalassa on the coast of Monaco. It was a circular shell-like design with successive rings superimposed on each other, housing homes, hotels, offices, restaurants, and other facilities. As outstanding as it was, it was never executed. Marine utopias have continued to be a recurring aspect of modern-day architecture. Although nothing of much significance has been brought to life in that regard, it is safe to say that technological advancement makes it more likely today than several years ago. But one thing is sure, building on the sea is distinct from building on the land. The stakes are higher, a lot can go wrong during construction and after. It is therefore imperative that it is done outstandingly well. So in whose hands will this delicate task lie? The creators. The audacity to do big things is not enough to bring them to life. There must be unquestionable skill and expertise capable of execution. So if Saudi Arabia is the one with audacity, then who has the technical ability to pull the project through? It's none other than Lazzarini Design Studio. The name likely rings a bell, as they have become well known for their unconventional, mind-blowing designs. It was founded by an Italian designer and architect, Pier Paolo Lazzarini, in 2009, who has continued to spearhead the creation of futuristic projects. The studio is based in Rome, Italy, where it operates and churns out novel architectural designs and projects. Since its inception, it has grown into a team of experienced designers and professionals, dedicated to producing stunning, functional, and futuristic designs. Lazzarini Design Studio has a diverse range of projects that showcase their versatility and adaptability. Their portfolio includes yacht designs, luxury apartments, futuristic cars, and even vessels that can move on land, sea, and in the air. The studio is known for its use of advanced technologies and materials, including carbon fiber, Kevlar, and titanium. Their clean lines and minimalist aesthetics often characterize their designs, and their bold use of color suggests that they are borrowed from the future. One of the most notable aspects of Lazzarini Design Studio is its commitment to sustainability. The studio has developed several eco-friendly projects, including a concept for a floating city that runs on renewable energy sources. This commitment to sustainability is reflected in their use of materials, designs, and energy-efficient technology. Another key feature is their attention to detail, as each project is meticulously planned and executed, with every aspect of the design carefully considered. This results in designs that are not only visually striking, but are also highly functional and tailored to meet specific needs. Overall, Lazzarini is a highly innovative and creative design firm, pushing traditional design boundaries. With their commitment to sustainability, attention to detail, and use of cutting-edge technologies, they are poised to continue to produce stunning and iconic designs for years to come. Let's take a quick rundown through some of the astonishing projects Lazzarini has executed. First on this list is a jet capsule called the Gran Turismo Foil, GTF, which was designed as a flying yacht shaped like a spaceship and made of carbon fiber and fiberglass. It can lift itself one meter above the surface of the water, propel itself forward with specially made wings, and reach speeds as high as 13 knots. This design studio seems to have a great affinity for building yacht-like structures, with the ability to float on water, as is seen in many of their other structures. Another one is the Pearl Suite, a mobile floating suite that specifically targets the hospitality industry and consists of a circular hull and domed-shaped covering with luxurious facilities, which are all 100% solar-powered. It's a floating hotel room that is mobile and sustainable. It can also be fitted with an electric engine that can move the vessel at a speed of 5 knots from one point to another using GPS and autopilot technology. It includes a kitchen, toilet, and a convertible studio bedroom. It can transform the hotel industry by radically giving users a brand new experience. Next on this list are some of their wildest creations, including the Stratosphera, an ultralight sphere designed to accommodate two passengers and move 
move on water, land, and air. It sure looks like something from a sci-fi movie. Similar to this is the Air Yacht, which can move for over 48 hours at a stretch, powered by twin helium tanks on either side. Surprisingly, it can land both on land and water. While it cannot move on land, another yacht called the Pegarus can move on water and has rotating cylinders that make it possible to move on land. Lazzarini has also developed a system for bringing the world's best automobile creations to the water, using a new floating motor system that can be fitted onto any car. In addition to this, they have designed several phenomenal yachts, such as the F-33 Spaziale yacht, which is a 33-foot-long super-slick vessel with a striking futuristic line design, a 130-foot-long hyperyacht called Xenos, Embryon, a 24-meter translucent yacht with adjustable transparency, and Saturnia, a 328-foot-long super yacht with a private port for smaller yachts of up to 1.5 meters. But it gets even more interesting with the swan-shaped mega-yacht Avangardia, with a striking similarity to a swan. With such a track record, it is no surprise that they have come up with this sterling idea that's causing no small stir in the architectural space. The proposed $8 billion giant floating city is shaped like a turtle, gracefully positioned in the middle of the sea. It is said to be twice the size of the Roman Colosseum, and three times longer than the yacht Azam, which currently holds the record as the world's largest yacht. What's the idea behind this project? Why is there the need for a floating city, and what will it consist of? The idea. The Pangeos Terra Yacht takes us on a journey to over 200 million years ago, when a supercontinent consisting of Africa, North America, South America, and Asia existed as a single mass. It was called Pangea, derived from the Greek word for Mother Earth. With time, rifts began appearing in the Earth's crust as the Atlantic Ocean found its way through, and Pangea split into the continents we know today. Lazzarini and Saudi Arabia are dreaming up a new continent and translating what once was into a futuristic expression. To begin this, a massive dry dock would need to be built, especially for the project. This would entail reclaiming some land from the sea and dredging over a hundred hectares of the seabed to construct a massive dam. The Terra yacht needs a Terra shipyard tailored to accommodate its enormous size. This will offer easy water access and make launching the super vessel easier once it is fully ready. The shipyard will be flooded using the dam's water reservoir, and then the Terra yacht will be lifted and left to float on the water's surface. This is one of the reasons why Saudi Arabia has been considered the perfect location, since it has the much-needed space available. King Abdullah Port is the suggested site of construction. The shipyard will be 650 meters wide and 600 meters long. With a width of 610 meters and a length of 550 meters, the gigantic structure will take the shape of a sea turtle. It is unclear why this particular shape was chosen, but it is undoubtedly one factor that makes this project awe-inspiring. There are speculations that it could be linked to ancient mythology. You may have already seen the picture of a giant turtle carrying the world on its back. Different cultures have varying versions of this, but they all point to the concept of a world turtle. It is believed that in the world's creation, the soil was piled on the back of a giant sea turtle, and it continued to grow until the creature was carrying the whole world. At this point, we may need to sit the designers down for a chat concerning their deep ideation process, which is borrowing so much from history for such a modern project. Project. Now, to the structure of the floating city. The hull consists of nine separate bows, subdivided into different sections, across a 30-meter draft. The mechanism that keeps the megastructure afloat is embedded in the nether region. It consists of 30,000 cells, which provide what the design studio describes as an unsinkable floating solution. The Pangeos will also be powered by nine high-temperature superconductor engines, with each one being fueled by renewable onboard energy sources and capable of 16,800 horsepower. These engines can move the floating city as fast as five knots. Several renewable energy sources will power the Terra yacht as it moves on its endless voyage around the waters of the world. These will include solar panels, wind turbines, and ocean currents. The rooftop area is lined with solar panels for harnessing solar energy, and the wings of the yacht are designed to generate energy from the breaking of the waves. This means that as energy is being expended through one means, it will 
will be replenished through another, so it will continue to move with zero emissions. This design also includes an advanced water filtration and waste management system, ensuring that the yacht is self-sufficient and environmentally friendly. In addition to its sustainable features, the Terra Yacht also offers a range of amenities and features that make it a luxurious and comfortable living space. The yacht will feature a range of restaurants, shops, recreational facilities, residential apartments, private villas, and hotel rooms. There will also be a rich selection of shopping malls, resorts, parks, beach houses, and air and water travel terminals. An aerial view of the Pangeos shows a port at the center of the edifice, which will also have room for private yachts and boats owned by residents. It also houses an array of greenery, including trees and manicured lawns in various parks and gardens, strategically positioned throughout the city. Specific housing arrangements and interior design have not been released, but we can speculate based on the exterior design and popular yacht design features. There will likely be different categories of housing options, with varying prices, beginning with small, regular spaces to more expensive apartments and even luxurious spaces fit for royalty. It is also expected that there will be 19 luxury apartments and 64 living quarters on each of the wings of the turtle-like structure. The rooftop will have shell-like homes, which will be made up of 72 terraces that overlook the sea, or the center of the city. According to the plan, this crazy floating megacity is expected to house as many as 60,000 people, all suspended in the middle of the sea. However, it may only be accessible to very wealthy individuals who will be able to afford the cost of the luxurious ocean-bound home. Life on the yacht promises to be clean and free from environmental pollution, crime, and day-to-day -day stress. Each resident will have access to world-class facilities and will have access to easy travel via sea and land via on-site ports. There will also be flying vehicles that will be used to access various locations within the city. One remarkable thing to note about this project is that ultimately, the Terra Yacht will not have a particular home or port. Instead, it will continue on a perpetual cruise. The destination will, in fact, be the journey. Due to its huge mass, it will have a maximum speed of only 5 knots, which is about 5.7 miles per hour, or 9.2 kilometers per hour. Funding the project the Pangeos Terra Yacht Project is an ambitious and innovative project that will require a significant amount of funding to complete. Construction is slated to begin in 2033 and will take a total of eight years to finish. Currently, the cost of the project has been put at a whopping $8 billion, and critics say it may cost even more. The exact funding mechanism for the project has not been publicly announced, as it is a private project developed by Lazzarini Design Studio and its founder, Pierre. Paolo Lazzarini in collaboration with the Saudi Arabian Kingdom. However, there are several potential ways the project could be funded. One possible funding mechanism is through private investment or venture capital. The project's unique design and potential to revolutionize the marine architecture and design industry may attract investors interested in financing innovative and sustainable projects. Private investment could come from a variety of sources, including high net worth individuals, institutional investors, or private equity firms. Another option is that the project could be funded through a combination of crowdfunding and pre-sales of apartments and rooms on the yacht. Crowdfunding has become a popular way for projects to raise funds from a large number of individual investors, and it could be a way for the Terra Yacht to raise a portion of the funding needed. Pre-sales of apartments and rooms on the yacht could also generate significant revenue for the project, as it would allow potential residents and guests to secure their spot on the yacht before it is completed. The project could also be funded through a combination of government grants, subsidies, and tax credits. Governments around the world have shown a growing interest in supporting sustainable and innovative projects, and the Terra Yacht Project's commitment to sustainability could make it eligible for government funding. Overall, the Pangeos Terra Yacht Project funding will likely come from a combination of all of these – private investment, crowdfunding, pre-sales, and government support. However, Lazzarini Design Studio has so far launched a controversial crowdfunding project on the official page of the Terra Yacht to begin to raise much-needed funds. People can now purchase virtual NFT entrance tickets and tours from as low as $16 and virtual VIP appointments starting from $160. All these will be perpetuated through the metaverse and will give people who believe in the project the opportunity to own a chunk of it before it is built in the real world. Yes, these fees are a measly sum compared to the amount that's needed to build the Pangeos, and we expect to get more insight into the financial situation as time goes on. Perhaps Saudi Arabia will step in as a major stakeholder and financier.
Challenges The Terra Yacht is a groundbreaking project that represents a significant step forward in sustainable and futuristic design. Its innovative design and commitment to sustainability make it an exciting and inspiring project that has the potential to shape the future of marine architecture and design. However, some people are willing to bet an arm and leg that this project may never see the light of day. Is it simply a penchant for negativity and natural tendency to oppose excellent ideas due to fear, or are there indeed valid reasons? Well, there seem to be valid arguments for the likely challenges regarding this project. At a time when Saudi Arabia has come under fire for running its construction project using slave workers and underpaid laborers, eyebrows are being raised as to the strategy for the human resources needed to execute this ambitious project. Thousands of workers will be needed to work for close to a decade to bring the project to fruition. Working far away from the urbanization and in harsh weather conditions and environments, will they be properly catered for and recompensed? Does the estimated cost of the project put this into consideration? This is just one of the pressing questions. Some NFT enthusiasts have said that it appears that all there is to the gigantic turtle project is the sale of NFTs, as the projected cost of the project is almost at par with the estimated worth of the whole NFT market. They say the math is not adding up. Other individuals have said that the structure is too complex and enormous to be built in just eight years. They believe the technicalities will be far too complicated to be solved in such a short time, especially Especially since there's currently no shipyard in the whole world that can accommodate the building of such an edifice. The practicality and safety of the general design of the ship have also been questioned, and some think it does not meet the standards of maritime engineering. The turtle wings, which are supposed to house the residential structures, are perceived to be too thin to handle the weight of the proposed buildings. More importantly, the seaworthiness and structural integrity is being questioned, as the design will need extremely strong and ridiculously expensive structures. Structures. Otherwise, it will fall apart in the middle of the sea. The power generated by the engines is only sufficient to propel it at five knots in favorable weather conditions. This means that in bad weather, it will likely be uncontrollable and will simply move in whatever direction the wind and waves move. Other concerns include the sustainability of permanent residents. All supplies will have to be gotten on shore and then transported onto the yacht, and it will most likely be a rigorous process. With limited job opportunities and the projected high cost of housing, only the very rich will be able to afford it. It is uncertain if they will choose to make it a permanent residence, since their sources of livelihood will be in terrestrial areas. Another serious question is dry docking. The designers have claimed that it is unsinkable, yet we saw even the Titanic sink. If this floating city were to develop any fault in the middle of the ocean and far away from home, that would spell doom. The only possible place where it can be dry docked is where it was built. Is this simply a a lofty dream, or will we see, for the first time, the idea of a utopian city brought to life? Only time will tell. Till then, we shall keep our fingers crossed as we continue to watch, albeit from a distance. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos.